Hello everyone, I'm Simon. Welcome back. Part 3 of Jib, the Vampire Bar Girl. Episode 2, 1, we're talking about Peter, who is 35 years old, tall, skinny, white skin. Got a bit of money, house in the UK, family okay, the mum and dad. Only one girlfriend in his life. Sweetheart from school. She ran off with another girl. Left him. He's gone. Thailand, he's working. On his laptop and computer. His own business. Making good money. Can work anywhere in the world. He's done a couple of years travelling. He's ended up in Thailand. He's met a girl. He's fallen for a girl. A bar girl by the name of Jib. He's more fallen for her body rather than her because every time he's, most of the time he's seen her she's been in a cat suit that looks like it's sprayed on. Very attractive. We left it that he'd gone back to the UK to see his folks for a month, come back to Thailand, got himself an apartment again, gone back to the bar where Jib works and she's gone and a couple of months have passed and he's kept going in eventually he's given money to the old Thai lady in the bar to tell him the truth where she'd gone she kept saying she'd gone home but eventually she said no nope, she's gone to Patea that's where we pick it up at the point that he's told she's gone to Patea he, he knows he's got no chance of finding her again. There's thousands of bars in Patea. He's up in the north of Thailand. Patea is sort of midway down. If he went there, he couldn't find her. He's got no phone numbers. There's no way of contacting her at all. He's got no emails, nothing. So he sort of has to come to terms with it that she's gone. He's lost her. And he spends the next couple of months, he likes Chiang Mai, he quite often finds himself in the park, tapping away on his computer working in the daytime. He's getting to know a few of the locals now. There's a little guy opposite uh, his condo, he's got a, got a visa shop, <coughs> uh, a Thai guy that speaks good English. He's had a few problems with his computer and uh, Peter's actually gone over and fixed uh, everything for him a couple of times so that's good so a few months passed no news from Jib no one's seen her she's not been around she's gone off working selling her body in potato one afternoon he sat in the park and so how long since he's seen her five months Went off to the UK for a month, a couple of months wandering around, going to the bar, and a couple of months more working. Five months since he's seen her. Sunny day, it's 30 degrees, he's mid afternoon, almost finished working for the day. In the last couple of months, he's, he's had the odd girl friend, short time with girls, but heart's not been in it, his head's still thinking of Jib, the body. He's getting ready to pack up and go home and he looks up and along the path he sees Jib walking towards him. His heart is pounding, his eyes are wide open, his mouth's open, he's oh my god Jib and she's a hundred yards away at the moment, hundred meters she found him, she's walking towards him, the closer she's getting he's looking at her and thinking something looks slightly different about her and the closer she gets, oh, she looks like she's put a bit of weight on in the face and as she's getting nearer and nearer he suddenly looks and she has a larger stomach 
gets closer and closer, puts her arms out and oh my god she's pregnant. He doesn't know what to do but he puts his arms out and she comes up, presses her stomach against him and cuddles him and then stands back and he's mouth is open and he's looking down at her stomach and looking at her and oh, the girl he'd fallen for has just come back into his life and she's pregnant oh my god what a shock and a thousand questions immediately but where have you been oh, you've just arrived what's happened what it, it, everything's just trying to come out of his mouth and they sit down on the bench and he says, the woman say you go potato, work potato. And Jib says, no, 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 I not, I know not go potato. In her broken English. I not, I go home, family. And he's, uh, but the woman, no, I go home, I, you go UK. Then I find I pregnant. Cannot work, you pregnant. So I go home see my family my family take care of me and he's well why didn't you come and see me or contact me or you got UK you go you know England gone and not think you come back <laughs> and he's like oh, so and you're pregnant she goes yeah your baby your baby <laughs> this is a bar girl your baby and he's doesn't know what to say what do you mean it's my my baby how how is it my baby you work bar and customers and she said then to him all customers you don't use condom only you not use everybody use but you not you're not like which was true because he didn't like and he was quite insistent that he wouldn't use protection. Only you, only you, not use. And he's, uh, uh, how far, how, how pre, uh, five months. The dates tie in and he's, he's, he's just spinning his head and he's like, where you stay now? I just come village, parents taught me come see you must tell you you have baby and then I go back village and he's like no 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 what I just come off bus come find you friend tell me you always here so she'd come down from the village so had she gone home nah she must have gone to Patea worked more for months and then it was getting too far she was starting to show so then she's like surely my head is like, yeah, you're working and you've come here to stitch Peter up. Hmm. Peter's like totally in shock. He doesn't know. His girl's come back and she's five months pregnant. It could be his. He says, no, look, let's let's go get food. Let's let's go, Condo. You stay with me and we, we talk. We find out and figure what to do. <coughs> Jib's over the moon. She said, mm, yeah, okay, uh, uh, right, off they go. So he's got all his rucksack on his back, the computer, he's got Jib, who must be 20 now, um, five months pregnant, on his arm, go and get food. It's your baby, it's your baby. <laughs> no, don't do it, you know, oh no. They go and get food and they go to the condo. They spend the whole night and the next morning talking about it all and he's trying to figure it out. Now Jib comes to the point and says to him, uh, DNA, we go, DNA, you can show you it's your baby. And she, for a few hours, she kept on to him. We go, DNA, you, then you're happy, baby yours. And go, DNA. He, he did have a tentative look online at the cost and it's, it, 
back in those days it was quite expensive. It was seven, eight hundred pounds, maybe a thousand bucks. But the way she kept saying, come on, let's go, we go DNA. Only you not have protection, all my customer protection. And for some reason he, naive, what? The way he's been brought up by his family, if you, you get married once, you have kids, you have the house and etc. And if you get a girl in trouble, you marry her and take care. And he's been brought up that way. The fact that she keeps saying we go and get a DNA test means she's 100% sure it's his. He has to believe her. I mean, this is Jib. She's 20 years old, she's a bar girl, but she's, her English is broken. But she's saying it's his. He's like, it's gotta be his. No DNA test. Did not do a DNA test. This child could have been a hundred guys, kid. Could be anyone, any nationality. He did not do that test. They decide, he said, well, he decides, well, okay, it's my child. We must settle down. I, I will, we'll get married. And they start talking about getting married and where they're going to live and he wants to go back to England take her to the UK and get married in the UK and do it all properly and um, Jib's like, well okay I've now got the father of my child and he's going to take care of me mm, yeah she's got him hook, line and sinker first twist She's pregnant. Is it his? Where was she? Was she in Patea? Was she in the village? Mm. Then the subject of her family and where she lives comes up and she says, my family no good, my family bad. No money, have no money, uh, not have somewhere to stay, village. And he said, I want to meet your family and, and you know, I've got to ask them if I can marry you and no, their family, my family, no good, no good. Um, you give them money and we just go away. And in Thailand, the tradition is, uh, Sinsod is it called, where the gentleman, so Peter, would give money to the family to say thank you for bringing her up through, from birth, as a bit of a thank you. And she said, we just give them money, we not go see them. Uh, he said, well, um, okay. Another mistake. Doesn't know anything about her village or her family. He's just still, she's pregnant and, well, we'll just up and go, you know, as if it was that simple. Oh dear. So, he, says to her he's gonna have a chat with the visa guy he knows across the road see what the situation is about how he could take us to the UK how they could get married all the future and she's like yeah okay so she stays in the condo and he goes across to the visa guy this Thai guy he helped the ones tells him the situation and the Thai guy laughs at him you crazy foreigner, you crazy phalang. What are you doing? And Peter's, no, nope, I've made my mind up. This is what I want to do. It's my life. I want to do this. Can you help me? Can you help us? Hmm. He said, yep, yeah, you're going to need loads and loads of paperwork. You're not going to be able to take your girlfriend pregnant to the UK. It won't happen. You'll have to have the baby here first and then take her as a tourist first, leave the baby with the family, come back and then you'll apply for the next visa and so on. But the first thing you'll need is she needs a passport. Has she got a passport? If not, you're going to have to go to Bangkok, get a passport as first step. He said, then once you've got that, 
you go to the embassy, get an application form, and come back here. Okay, he says, fine. So she's, at this point, she's about six months pregnant now. We've gone on a few weeks. They arrange a trip down to Bangkok. They get a hotel booked for the night. So they up, fly down to Bangkok, check in, off to the passport office, fill all the forms out. They take a ticket in a queue and wait. And then Jib goes up to the counter. Peter just stays, stays there though. She gets to the counter, gives everything to the guy. Now Peter, he's, he's about, oh, about 30 metres away. The guy in the counter, behind the counter, shouts at Jib in Thai and throws something back at her. Pete can't see, he can't see what it is. He's like, what? Okay, don't know what's going on. Jib fiddles around in her handbag, gives him something else and he sorts paperwork out gives her a ticket and then she comes back she says two hours we get passport and Peter asks what was that all about he said oh my ID card um, out of date I have a new one I can give wrong one oh, okay whatever so they go off get some food for a couple of hours wander around the passport office and the outside come back sure enough there's their passport a couple of thousand baht whatever it was grab first passport she's ever had over the moon shows him oh, that's good fabulous and he's looking at the passport this is nice very good and pictures good and everything and looks the, the dates seems like because they're in the tie dates of the <coughs> slightly different it was 2000 and something 53 or whatever it was and he's he's trying to calculate something's not right now he twigs date of birth and he says to Jim well, well, what date of birth how old are you date of and he sits down with it. turns out that when she was at the counter the ID card she put over the counter was let's say not real the next card was real. When Peter met Jib, she was 19. So now she's 20. She's actually 18 now. Hmm, 18. Not 20. She's suddenly, obviously, been working in the trade at a younger age. Peter, you're you're 18. You're not 20, and she, not wanting to lose faces. Uh, yeah, you, I tell you already how old I am. Yes, I'm. I'm 80. This isn't the mind blowing for him. I mean, she's just took two years off her life in her age. She's what 35, 36 now, and she's 18. So when he was seeing her. She was possibly 17. She's lied about her age. But again, she doesn't want to lose face and she just sort of shrugs it off and let's go. Hotel. And he's just caught up in the moment. He's like, oh, oh whatever. Okay, so the age is, she's lied to me a bit. She's lied to you a bit. It's your baby. She's lied to you a bit about her age. Off they go, hotel, next morning, up to the embassy, get an application form, and they head back up to Chiang Mai. We'll leave it there. <laughs> this has gone on for 20 minutes. I told you this was going to be a long story. There's so much in it. She is a vampire. She is a vampire. Now she's an 18-year-old pregnant vampire. Stay tuned. See you on the next one. Bye.